Hi, how are you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these fine art portraits using textures and film grain as well, just to give your images a little bit more of a painterly effect and a sort of renaissance style to them as well. So this is the finished article. This is the original. So I'm just going to walk you through the process that I've done. So there's already been some retouching done on this image. As you can tell, the skin's been retouched. So what we want to do is actually add this texture to that image. So you can get these textures anywhere on the internet. If you just go onto Google and type in textures, photography textures, lots of different downloads you can get. They're all, they're all free. So just go do some hunting. The other option is that you can photograph textures yourself and then use them as well. So you've got your own textures. So all I'm going to do with this, the first thing I'm going to do, because the photograph is black and white, I'm going to turn this to black and white, but I'm just going to desaturate it. I'm not actually going to change it. If you come up to here and it says image and then mode, you can see it's an RGB color. We could go grayscale, but I don't want to do that. I just want to desaturate it. It just, just means that we don't have problems later down the line. So I was going to come to here, desaturate and press OK. And the other thing I want to do is rotate it because it's a portrait. So I'm going to go to image and then image rotation and 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm going to zoom out there. So all we need to do now is come to the move tool at the top here, click in the middle, hold down, come up to your picture. Don't let go of the mouse, bring it into the middle and then let go. And you can see that it's covered. So we can press control command T and that will transform it. So if I zoom out, if I hold the shift key down, I can then pull this down and holding the shift key just keeps it to scale basically. So if I move it into the middle, I can then just fit this to size. So I'm just going to do that and just bring this down. There we go. So you can see there's a, there's a bit there where the actual picture is bigger. So I'm not going to hold the shift key down now and just stretch it and pull it out. There we go. So once I'm happy with that, I can press enter or the tick button at the top there. So if we come up to our layers panel, you can see here, there, here is our texture. So that's overlaid there. So now what we want to do is come to the blending mode. So you can choose pretty much any of these, but the three main ones are overlay, soft light, and then hard light. So I'm going to use hard light because I want this texture to be different. I want it to be quite fierce. And you can see there, hard light gives us that. Soft light is obviously a lot softer. And the overlay is just, just an overlay, but I, I think hard light is going to work well with this shot. So now we've done that, we want to then mask this. So come down to the bottom here, click on the layer mask there, and it's created it. Come to the brush tool, and then make sure that our foreground color is black. So we want to make sure that's black there. And then come up to the top here, and you just want to click on a, a, a soft round brush there. And the opacity, let's push that up to 100% for now. And what I'm going to do is just start painting in. So what this is going to do is get rid of that texture over the model. So I'm at 100% because I'm in the middle. I'm pretty confident that I can control the mouse or the, the pen, whatever you're using. So now we're going to get to the edges. I'm going to start bringing this down. Now what I'm going to do in a little while is actually bring some of that back. But for now, I just want to make sure that I'm getting rid of the majority of it. I'm not too bothered if there's some left, but I want to be able to control that. I don't want to just have the texture there because I couldn't paint it in. So the whole idea with this is just to just to separate the model from the background and then bring back some of that texture later on and obviously do that with a lot of control rather than rather than uh, it just being there because we couldn't paint it paint it out okay I'll show you what I mean in a minute so let's come down to here so again I've pushed that opacity up a little bit just a little bit more so there's quite a lot there you can see so sometimes you might want to leave more around the edges because you want to blend it into the background that's fine you can do that there's no kind of rules to this it's all mainly done visually by eye and obviously you have artistic license to edit your images the way that you want. Okay, so let's just make this a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start getting rid of that there. Okay, that's looking good. So once we've done that, what we can also do is 
we can just slightly blur this background texture simply because the image is an image with quite a shallow depth of field so we want to we want to try and make this as realistic as possible so by blurring that background what that's going to do is just visually make it look a little bit more realistic rather than rather than it being pin sharp because th that that background wouldn't be that sharp okay so let me just finish off some bits here there we go so i think that looks pretty good there now what you can do as well is come up to the layer here if you click on the alt or option key and click you'll actually see where you've been painting so you can actually go over so you could bring this up to 100 percent now and then just black in the areas that you may have missed so i'm not going to go over the hair because obviously um, that would be slightly softer so once i've done that i'm going to click the alt or option key again it's going to bring us back so i now know that's 100 percent gone so by clicking on the actual layer there i'm going to come up to filter blur and go to gaussian blur and i'm going to add about a one pixel of blur press ok and that's just blurred that slightly for us and that's just going to help visually in fact that could probably go a little bit more because i've just noticed here it's still a little bit sharp and that's quite near the eye so let's let's do that again let's go to filter blur and gaussian blur and i'm actually going to push that up to two pixels there we go that's much better that looks a little bit more realistic now okay so now we've done that I'm going to now add this here, which is a, a film grain. Again, it's just another texture. You can get these all across the internet, like I said earlier. So let's rotate this. So image, image rotation, and then 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, same thing. Move tool. Click in the middle, drag it up to the picture. Keep dragging, let go, and there we go. It's in the middle. So control, command T to transform. And let's just transform this so we get a shape that fits in and again I'm going to drag that so it fits there we go I'm going to press enter to okay that come up to here and then I'm going to select either one of these three so again hard light soft light or overlay so depending on what you want will give you completely different effects so if we zoom in we can probably have a, a closer look so do we want it to be a hard um, maybe soft light or overlay. I think the hard light is probably the best. The soft light, you kind of lose most of the scratches. So again, hard light. And later on, we can actually change the opacity of these. So again, with this, let's make a layer mask. So it's on the white there. Select the brush. We've got the same brush. We're on 100% opacity. This time, I'm going to drop that down to 25% because I, I still want some of the scratches to remain on her so it kind of blends with that background a little bit more so before i do that i'm actually going to come back to that texture and i'm just going to go to the opacity and just drop that down to about 60 percent that's looking good so that just gives me a, a bit of a bit of a better visual to start with so i'm going to drop this opacity now a little bit lower actually now i've lowered that opacity on there so I'm just going to run over a few places. So the eyes, quite important because that's the first thing we look at on any portrait, the nose and the mouth. And I'm going to drop this really, really low now and drop the flow down as well. And I'm just going to paint around some of the, some of the face there. So with this, I'm just being really selective of where I'm going. So around the ears, maybe some of the roses at the top here because they're quite dominant in that shot and the hair there. And then if we come down, we can just slightly glide over her her body there and around the edges here. I'm really just doing circles, but because we've got this so low, it's not going to be a massive effect. But it's going to be enough just to bring back some detail. And we can see there, like on our hands, we're just bringing back some of that detail. And it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So a bigger brush, and let's just go over... There we go around here where she's actually blending in with that background a little bit so under the chin there i think that needs doing and we could actually bring this up a little bit more for that area 
There we go. You can see that's starting to come back. That's it. Okay, so once you're happy with that, we can then come down to this one here and we can again change that opacity. So if we bring that all the way down, that is just the top texture coming through. And as we bring this up, this is the, the original texture that we brought in earlier. So like I said a little while ago, we can control this. So we can bring that down. And I think actually around there is quite nice, about 70%. So what I'm gonna do now is come back to the mask that we were doing earlier when we completely got rid of her just so we could see what we were doing really. I'm now gonna switch this to white and start bringing it back in. And this will help the whole image just bind together a little bit. And again, we need to be a little bit selective about where we do this. So because we've got quite a low opacity, we can really go over any areas we want and it's not gonna make a major, major change. It's just gonna bring some of that texture back and we can, keep painting, come back onto here, press the Alt or Option key, and I can see look, the white areas is where I'm bringing that back. So I, I can be pretty pretty precise of where I want that. So let's click on that. That's looking pretty good. And if you wanna add more of that in certain places, you can just push this up. And maybe we want to add more of that underneath where the shadow is on there shadows on here just to darken it make it look a little bit more natural down here so we're just bringing it all back a little bit across there that's it across the hair maybe and maybe some of these areas here so i'm just looking at the darker areas i'm not looking at the highlights i'm just looking at the shadows so in essence we're kind of doing dodge and burn but with texture we're bringing texture back just to give us a little bit more three-dimensional look there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So let's add a curves adjustment. So come down to the bottom and select curves. And now we can just make three points here. And what we can do now is, is basically just add contrast to the image by creating a, a, a mini kind of S-curve, S so to speak. So. You can see there we've got, it's a real faint one, but it's it's enough just to make this image pop. There we go. And that's it, that's how you do it. So that's how you get your images to look at a little bit of these, these fine art portraits and, and adding textures is a great way to really make your images come alive. If we come down to the bottom here, click on the camera, you can see that that was the before and that's the after, and, and it looks pretty good. The good thing is, is that obviously you can come back to any of these and you can continue editing. And if you make a mistake, you can go back. So it's non-destructive, which is a really, really uh, great way of editing. It's the best way to edit. And once you're finished with that, you can just go to file and then you can click save as or save as a copy. And you, if you save it as a TIFF file, uh, what will happen then is that these layers will be left open. So you can come back to that later, a later date and, and these will be here. You can then continue editing if you want to change things up. If you're completely happy, then you can go to layer and then flatten image. That will flatten everything. You've now got this finished image and then you can just go to file and then save as a copy and then you can save it to whatever you want. So you can just call this fine art and then hit that. I've already got one there, so I'm not going to replace it. But I hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing your images. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.